going to start with the file in Cricut Design Space. The brown pieces are the pieces you're going to cut out of chipboard. That includes the base pieces here, as well as the small circle piece for the closure. The gray pieces are the paper that you're going to cover those chipboard pieces with. You'll need to cut those four times. You also have the three baseballs, and then I've also included the baseball diamond that will go on the base. All right, we are going to start with page construction. So, the page bases, you're going to need five pages total. I've got these assembled, ready to go. Um, the page bases are two pieces, one piece seven and three quarters by seven and one quarter, one piece eight and one quarter by seven and three quarters. You're going to score it at half an inch on the seven and three quarter side and also on the eight and three quarter side because the pockets the inserts are going to be top loading you're going to score it instead of top and bottom you're going to score one side and then the bottom or top how or, i'm sorry one side and then the bottom <laughs> um i've got these ready to go and what i've actually done just to help us since we are assembling the pages outside the book excuse me um what i have done here just so that when we're putting our elements on the pages we know what we're looking at i've written spine on sp on one side t for top on the other i've done that on both sides of those four pages so to assemble the pages of course we've done our scores at half an inch on both sides what we're going to do is come in here and we're going to trim that corner so that you've got that little piece you're pulling out of that. And then we're going to score fold this one over and burnish it down. And then to assemble this initially, we are only going to attach it on the, on the, what will be the outside edge of the page, okay? So here's the top, here's where it's going to attach to the book. For now, we're just going to attach on this side. We're going to leave this bottom scored and folded in, but not attached because this is going to make attaching these to our spine easier. Okay, so... I'm just going to pull that, the backing off the tape back just a little bit and fold that down so I have a flag. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to line it up, make sure all of my e edges are even, all the way around, and I'm going to push that down. And then just very carefully peel that out and push that down and burnish it, okay? So this is our top, our spine, our top, and our spine, okay? All right, so front of page one is going to have some flaps and a pocket. The pocket is gonna be four inches by four inches you're going to score it at half an inch on three sides. You're going to do that same little trick that we did on here, where we're cutting out that little piece in the corner so that the corner folds flat. You're going to do that on both of the bottom corners. And then this is going to go on here like so. However, we're not going to put this down yet because we're going to wait until we go to mat this page because I have a little trick that we're going to employ to when we mat this page so that we're getting basically the square that would be underneath here. We're going to cut it out and put it on top here. So we're not actually going to attach anything to the page yet. We can go ahead and build this flap and it's entirely up to you if you want it to um, open out this way and then this way which I think is how I'm going to do that. 
So your bottom flap is going to be five and a quarter by six inches. You're going to score this at half an inch on each side so that when these are folded in, it's four and a quarter by six. This flap is actually going to be from one of your scraps from cutting your page bases. And I've tried to do that with most of this album so that, you know, you've got this scrap that's um, four and a quarter inch wide that you're, you're going to have left over from building the page, cutting the page bases to try to utilize those so we're not wasting a bunch of paper. So this flap is four and a quarter inch wide by 12 inches and you're going to score it in the middle at six inches. Okay, that is going to attach onto here. Except I'm going to turn it this way. So what I'm going to do again, so let's figure out what my thing is. I'm just going to pull up the edge of that tape and I'm going to line this up on top of that flap. Okay, so this flap will open up this way, it will open this way, and when it's down on the book, it will also open this way. Again, we're not going to put either one of these down yet because we're going to do a little trick with the matting underneath here, okay? So we don't want to put this down yet because this is going to go down on top of I'm sorry, no, this does not go down on top. This one actually goes, anyway, we're not going to put this down yet because, or the pocket down yet because of the matting thing. This one is actually going to go right to the edge here, to the outside edge. So we can go ahead and put this one down. I'm going to turn this sideways and I'm just going to center this up on the edge of my page and push it down. So. Like I said, this will open this way, will open this way, and it will open this way, okay? This one for now we're not putting down, so I'm actually just going to clip it back to that page. We can turn this over and go to the back side of page two. I'm sorry, page one. And I have these numbered just simply to make it easier for assembly purposes. However, once you go to actually put these in the book, put these on the spine and put them in the book, you can put them in there however you, whatever order you want to, because I'm not actually going to keep them in the order that I'm putting them together in. This was just as I was designing it and I was numbering them, that's just kind of how it worked. Um, okay, so... This page, the back side of page one has a pocket. It also has, what did I do here? Oh, it's because it's hidden, that's why. Okay, so we have two flaps. The flaps are seven and a half by five and a quarter. We're gonna score these at one inch simply so that they will lay flatter. I know that doesn't seem to make sense. First time I heard that and decided to try it, I was like, there's no way this is going to work. I don't know. Honestly, it does. I think it's because there's like less pressure after you fold this for the, the paper to lay flat. But we're going to score both of these at one inch. So these again are seven and a half across, five and a quarter high. You're going to score these at one inch. And then we're just going to center these up on the page. You are going to have a slight border on each end, which is fine. And we're going to put the other one up on the top. Thank you. That's big. <laughs> Sorry. Part of this, this album honestly has been in the works for like three months. And I had gone through and designed a whole bunch of it at the beginning of that period. And then um, had cut a bunch of it and then just okay, hadn't had time to get back to it. OK, 
Okay, so to make sure that these are lined up evenly, we're going to lay this on here so that we're matching this edge and this edge to the flap on top of it. Okay? So get those lined up. I should have left some of my backing on here. So don't pull your backing all the way off on this one. There we go. And I'm still slightly off, but that's okay. All right. We're going to end up doing a tie closure on here, but inside we have our pockets. So pocket is going to be eight and three quarters across, four and a quarter high. You're going to score the ends from the eight three quarter side at the top of your scoreboard. You're going to score these at half an inch and put adhesive on those flaps, fold them over, and we're just going to do adhesive on the bottom of this, on the inside of the pocket. And that is so that this pocket will lay a little more flat than it might otherwise. Um, when we put it down, just because we do have those flaps closing over the top of it. Okay. Sure we're still right side up <laughs> since I have covered up my... Okay, we're going to put this not quite all the way to the bottom. I'm maybe a sixteenth of an inch up from where this flap folds over. But there we go. There's our first page. You can set that aside. Okay, grab another page base. Let me grab a drink really quick here. Okay, that's better. <clears throat> Okay, so page two has kind of a fun little element here. So what we're going to have is we're going to have one big flap, okay? Big flap is going to go from seven inches high, eight inches across. We're going to score this at half an inch again. You could score this at one inch. That would be fine too. In fact, that would probably be really cute. And it's up to you. You can put this, you can actually cut the size down or like I said score this at one inch and put it coming down this way or you can put it opening to the side okay I'm gonna go ahead and do this one to the side and I need to pause for just a second okay so page two and when you do this because you've got your pages partially assembled make sure whatever you're intending to be on the front is really on the front because I just realized as I was sitting here that this one's wrong. <laughs> this is actually now going to end up being the front of this page. This with the little flaps in the pockets will end up being on the back, which is fine. Um, but pay attention to what side your you've marked as the spine when you're doing your front versus your back. And honestly, to make this easier on myself, because I know I will screw this up again, we're going to go B, F. Because I know I will do this again, and I'll have an entirely backwards album. And that will not make me happy. <laughs> okay, so back to the front of page two. So we have a large flap. This is going to be eight across by seven high. We're going to score it at one inch. This is going to go on here at the top of the page. Turn this upside down so I can center this up. Okay. And then the bottom, and I'm going to show you how I did this on a scrap piece of paper. We're going to have this little home plate shaped piece that's going to come up from the bottom. And we're actually going to put a magnet on here that's going to hold this all closed. Okay. So the flap is going to be six inches wide by six and a half inches high. You're going to score it at half an inch. After you have scored it. So here's my score. My score mark up here so we're going to pretend okay you know this is our this is our our actual piece we're using I have my Tim Holtz ruler 
I'm going to use the side with the zero on it so that I can center this up so I can put, so I've got three and three, and I'm going to come down here and make a little mark where my center is, okay? Then on each side, we're going to go down three inches and make a mark on the other two sides. So three inches, make a mark. Now we're going to take, and the easiest way I have found to do this is I'm going to put my pencil at the top of my mark there, push the ruler up against it, okay, so I've got my pencil on the center mark, pushing the ruler up against it, and then pivoting it until I reach where I've marked my three inches on the other side, okay. That's simple. And then all I'm going to do, and you could do this, line this up in your paper trimmer and do it. I'm just going to do it with scissors. So as long as you've got good long scissors that you can kind of use to, you know, stabilize your line as you cut, you'll be fine. And there is home plate. So when we go to mat this, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to make the starting piece smaller and then we're going to cut those same angles and then it's going to mat on here perfectly. So I'm going to move that scrap one out of the way, bring in our actual flap that we're using. Go ahead and pull that backing off. And Center up. That's not working. And then just center this on the page. Okay. There we go. Big flap. Home plate. I'm gonna put a couple of magnets on here. Okay. backing off. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to kind of figure out about where I want my magnet. We want it down far enough so that when we map this it's not pulling the paper up. If we go too far then you know your paper's right here, your magnets you know say right here. It ends up kind of making the paper bubble so you want it down far enough that that's not going to happen. Pull that backing off of there. Push it over, push it down, and there we go. We have our magnet. Okay, so for the back side of page two, we have an expanding pocket. The base is going to be seven and a half by four and a half. You're going to score this at half an inch, seven eighths, and one quarter. Flip it around, half an inch, seven eighths, one quarter. So this is going to go back, front, back, and then back, front, back, and burnish this down, and I am going to erase my note to myself on the side there. this side. And then to complete the pocket, so we're actually going to build the entire pocket off the page and then attach it. So the back and the top flap of the pocket are going to be eight and three quarters by five and a half. So you're going to score this at five eighths and one inch, so five eighths, then one inch, and then five and three quarters, 
and then six inches. That's probably supposed to be six and one eighth. We're going to see how this comes out. All right, so we're going to miter from the five eighths score line out. And then we're going to attach that down here. Okay. This is going to fold up and over. These are going to fold in on the sides and we're going to attach those. Okay. So these are going to come in on the sides and attach like this and then fold up and over. Okay. I think I did it quarter to help kind of hold that down. So let's stick a quarter in for now. Okay, so then get some adhesive on here. All right, so let's flip this over. We're going to start with the bottom. Take that adhesive off of there. I'm going to kind of hold that flat and just center that in here. Okay, then we're going to hold those in one side at a time because we need to get that. This is always the tricky part. I can never remember for sure how I have done this in the past. There we go. Okay, so basically, and this will actually be, whoops, that's not tarnished all the way down. Will actually be a little bit easier if you don't pull the adhesive backing all the way up. So fold this in here and line it up all the way down. And kind of pinch right there to get that started and then pull that out while you hold at the top and just kind of pinch as you go. Okay. I'm just going to use my bone folder, stick it down in there, and burnish those down. And then there is our pocket. On our pocket, we do want a small magnet. Maybe we want a magnet. <laughs> Cannot for the life of me get that backing off of there. So, same thing. Magnets together with the adhesive side face it out. Nope, not quite. Not quite. Let's pop that back off. Usually these will come right back off. Try this again. <laughs> when you put that down, make sure that the top part of your flap is coming all the way over the way it's supposed to. So there we go. All right. So there is our pocket. That is going on the back side of page two. We're going to go ahead and actually going to use glue on this to get this down. Why on earth do I have adhesive on the bottom of this? I have absolutely no idea. I probably put it on there by mistake, so.
The nice thing about score tape is, except this has been on here for a while, so I don't think it's gonna work. Okay, I'm actually gonna put that backing back on there. And what we will do to get around that when we go to mat the book, I'll actually cut a little strip that I can just stick right on the top of that on the bottom here. So that's fine. Just me not paying attention when I was putting tape on everything. <laughs> not thinking through what I was doing. But that's okay. It happens. All right. So I'm just going to center this up on here. Get it near the bottom. Get it pushed down, and there is our second page. All right, so page three for the front of page three. Page three on the front has a belly band with an insert. So the belly band is going to measure eight and three quarters across, four and a quarter high. Once again, this is using those scraps from cutting your page bases. Okay, so this is going to run across. So like that. So let's go ahead and get our adhesive backing off. And center it up. It helps me to turn it sideways to center it. Whatever works for you, if you can eyeball it the other way, I have to turn it. Okay. Our insert is going to be 12 inches by 7.5. You're just going to score it in the middle at 6 inches. And that's just going to slide down in there like that. Okay, on to the back side of page 3. And this one I'm kind of excited about. I did something a little bit different here. So, on the back side... And ignore all my paper clips because this is just, you know, how I make sure my waterfall's measured right. We're going to do a side loading pocket with a small waterfall on the top. Okay. So for the pocket, the pocket measures eight and a quarter by three and seven eighths. You're going to score it half an inch on the ends with the eight and a quarter side on the top. We're going to put that on the side here. And because I've now lost my pencil somewhere and I don't know where my other eraser is, it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and just erase my little notes off the back of here since I know what I'm doing on this one. Barely know what I'm doing some days, but you know. Oh, and I need tape on the bottom of this. So where's my quarter inch? Okay. So we're going to do our tape on the bottom like we typically do with my pockets. If you wanted to actually, you know, make the pocket so the bottom folds in, you would just add another half an inch to that measurement and then score it at half an inch. I'm fine with them being like this. I've not had a problem with my inserts or anything that I put into the pockets getting stuck. Um, so, you know, I know that's why I've seen other people do it the other way or they use glue, which is also a good option. Okay, so our waterfall pages are going to be 3 and 1 8 by four and five eighths, you're gonna score it at half an inch. And then I know you all know how to do waterfalls. I do mine upside down so that I can see better what I'm trying to line up against and center up against and whatnot. So we're gonna center this on top of the pocket. And there are, what, six pages in the waterfall? Apparently there are six pages in the waterfall. For some reason I thought it was five. But we'll figure this out here in just a second. So 
Did I measure that one wrong? What have I done here? Why is this one bigger? That's three and an eighth. That one's three and an eighth. So why is this just seeming weird? I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. Let's center this up. Just push that one down against the one above it. And so on and so forth till you have the waterfall completed. You want to make sure your very first page of your or flap on your waterfall is centered and exact because that will keep the rest of your waterfall in line. And as you can see, mine is slightly wonky because I swear to you, literally every waterfall I do ends up being slightly off because I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's a paper trimmer. I don't know if I'm just measuring challenged. Probably a combination of all of the above, quite honestly. Then one more. That's six. I think I have. Because initially I thought it was more pages. But actually, we're going to go seven. So we got a nice even number on here because that's just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So go through and we're going to burnish all of this down. Okay. And we'll see when we start matting this waterfall if it's going to lay flat if, if by the time we get paper on both sides of this because we are using the Cardabella paper and it is fairly heavy. Um, I'm hoping this will lay flat. If not, we can always do um, just a little band to kind of hold that flat if we want to. Okay, so that's going to go in our pile. We're going to move on to page four. Okay, so we're going to fix these. But basically, we're going to have a pocket. We're going to have two flaps that are going to be held shut by half of this baseball. So this is the bigger of the three baseballs that you cut with the Cricut. Um, we're actually going to trim this in half and then in half again so we have quarters. Um, so if you saw my 6x6 album that I did using just the 6x6 papers and I had done those little pockets that closed with like that, that quarter circle that you tucked a cut apart in front of to hold it closed, that's basically what we're doing here. And this album is actually where I had come up with the idea and I just had not had time to finish this one yet. So I ended up using it on that other album as well. So I'm going to set this back to the side and we're going to cut, recut our pockets. Or I'm sorry, not our pockets, our flaps because I cut them with the page going the wrong way. So let me just double check my measurement here. So the page is seven and three quarters. So if we're gonna do this the easy way. We're gonna go seven and three quarters. And I think I do want an inch flap on that as opposed to the half inch. So I'm gonna go seven and three quarters, eight, nine and three quarters. Okay, and then we're going to go seven and a quarter high, which I really hate this paper trimmer for this reason because it does cut all that off that I always end up kind of eyeballing where I think it is. And then using my ruler just to make sure it's really going where it's supposed to go. Okay, so half of seven and three quarters is going to be four and seven eighths. Okay. So we'll cut that at four and seven eighths. Okay. And then we're going to score this. 
at one inch with the four and seven eight side on the top. We're going to score this at one inch. And then we're going to get some adhesive on here. So essentially you're going to need two flaps, seven and a quarter high, four and seven eighths wide, scored at one inch. And is that going to be too long, too wide? Kind of. So let's do this with, I think this is why that other one was like this too. I'm going to use 5 8 tape and then I'm going to use quarter inch tape. That way we don't end up with adhesive hanging over the side. Scissor figure or my quarter inch tape just disappeared to place. Okay. Sorry about that. Alright. So, get those folded. And burnished. Okay. So, before we put the pocket on here, we need to put the flaps down first. So, and let's just dry fit these and make sure. If we're going edge to edge, on edge to edge, that they're meeting in the middle and not overlapping. Because if they're overlapping, which these are just ever so slightly, I'm actually going to put this in here and I'm going to take just a tiny, tiny bit off. Of course that. Paper from the socks. Or I need to change the blade, I don't know. Okay. Let's try to fit it one more time. And that's better. So, okay. I'm going to put this over here. So on the other side, do the same thing. And then we're going to open it up and we're going to put our pocket down. So actually, that'll be covered up so it won't matter if that's still there. Okay, so there's our pocket. I'm sorry, not our pocket, our flat. Our pocket is eight and a quarter by three and seven eighths, scored at half an inch on each side. Quarter inch score tape at the bottom, fold the sides in. down at the bottom and there you go so for our baseball our baseball is how wide seven inches wide so we need to cut it in half make sure it's seven inches on both sides that this is a symmetrical circle it is so we are going to line this up in the paper trimmer I'm going to do it so we're slicing it between our little red stitching and we're going to cut it, line it up at three and a half and cut it in half. Okay, there's our halves. Set one to the side because I'm not sure what we're going to do with that other half, but we'll find something. And then do the same thing again. We're going to put the flat side up there, line it up at seven and, or I'm sorry, three and a half, and then just trim that. So there we've got our two halves of our baseball. Now, you can do it this way so that they're out to the side like I had done on 
the six by six album, or we can do them in this way so that they're meeting in the middle. Okay, I think I'm actually going to do it that way. However, doing it this way, they're going to be kind of kind of loose. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put adhesive along the bottom here, and I am just going to use quarter inch score tape on the bottom. No, that way, because we want that to meet up in the middle. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so we're going to put quarter inch score tape along the bottom. in the right direction. Okay. And we're going to put that in there like so. And then what I'm going to do, because whatever I put in here as a cut apart, or I'm sorry, as a um, whatever I tuck in here to hold this closed, that's what I'm trying to say, is either going to be, I need to decide if it's going to be 6 inches or 5 inches. So I think I'm going to go 5 inches. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn these over again, and I'm just going to mark in here we're going to go 7 eighths. So we're going to put adhesive on this 7 inch side, okay? I'm sorry, on that side of our 7 eighths inch mark. I know what I'm trying to say here, it's just not coming out right. So I'm going to go back to my score tape. And I'm most likely going to supplement my score tape with some glue. Okay, so we don't want that hanging over there, of course. And so then we're going to line these up. And putting that tape on the outside is going to keep these from trying to flop over on us when we've got that on there. So I'm going to go ahead, get my backing off. Actually, I'm going to wait because if we go ahead and glue this down now, it's going to be harder to mat these. So I'm actually just going to clip these to the front of this page so that we know we have them and that they need to go on there before we mat. And then we can move on to the back side of page four. Back side of page four, very simple. We've got a couple of mats. I'm sorry, not mats, flaps that are just gonna overlap like so, held closed with a magnet. So the large flap, and you can decide if you want the large flap opening this way or this way, it really doesn't matter. I think I am going to turn them. So the large flap is going to be seven inches by seven and a quarter, scored at half an inch. I am going to turn this so that it's over there. The small flap is going to be three and five eighths by a seven and a quarter score to half an inch. I'm going to go here in a few minutes. Okay. So for this, I am going to do a big magnet. Maybe if I can get it out of the package. And I'm actually going to attach 
attach these together. Pull the backing off. And we're going to put it about right there in the middle of the small flap. And then get our backing off. And we're actually going to put it on the bottom layer, which is why I'm using the big one, so that it goes in between like that. Okay? Page four is done. Okay, page five. We have a pocket. What? No, we're going to go in a minute. A pocket that we're going to trim our corners on. In this one, we are making a little bit looser of a pocket, just so you can get a little bit more in there. Okay, so the pocket is seven and a quarter by five and a half. You're going to score it half an inch on three sides. Okay. Fold that. but you just kind of stay out of the way, okay? Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my son. He's six. And he's in here hanging out for a minute. And there's the cat. And the cat's in here hanging out too because, you know, why not? Okay, so this one does have a bigger flap closing this off. So this one is going to be seven and a quarter wide by seven inches high. And score it at half an inch. And then just center it up. Did Scooter say hi? No, Scooter doesn't need to say hi. Okay, so there's your front side of that. Okay, the back side of page five has a pocket that's going to go on the side here. And then we've got just some long flaps that are kind of almost like a waterfall. They really kind of are a waterfall. That are going to run across this way. So we're going to do our pocket first. Our pocket is eight and a quarter by four and a half. You're going to score half an inch on four sides. We're going to trim those corners out. Just like we did on the last one. Okay, Nick, don't mess. And then fold. This is going to be a side loading. Okay, Nick, enough out. Okay. And then the flaps, we have four flaps. They are three and five eighths by seven and a quarter. And we're going to do these just like you do a waterfall. Start at this edge and put them down. And then we are going to be finished with our page construction and we can start working on getting the base of the book put together and then getting our pages decorated before we put them in the book. Or, well, not decorated, matted. Decorating I usually do off camera. In fact, a lot of matting I tend to do off camera, but we're doing a couple of different things with this, so we will mat part of this 
on camera. Okay, all right, and there's that. And this also may end up with some kind of closure. It kind of depends once we start matting how it looks like these flaps are going to lie. But we'll determine that in a minute. I don't necessarily want to have to do another band on there if I don't have to. So, um, all right. So at this point, our pages are built. We can kind of see about where we need to have our spine as far as, you know, height of our book. So right now I'm thinking we're going to go at least two inches, I think probably two and a quarter. Um, and when I come back, we will do the spine, or I'm sorry, the hinge and the, the base construction, and then we'll start working on matting these pages. Okay, so now we're going to work on building the base of the album. So in the Cricut file, you should have had two baseballs. I cut these out of white cardstock with, of course, the red for the stitching. Um, I did assemble those, and I'm just going to set those off to the side for now. You should have cut one circle out of chipboard. You should have had two pieces of chipboard for the, the front and the back of the book. <clears throat> and then you should have cut those same pieces, and they are brown in the file, um, out of your solid cardstock as well. So I'm going to set these aside for right now. And then with a paper trimmer, I mean, you, you could add the shapes in Design Space and cut them that way. Honestly, with the spines and that kind of thing, it's almost easier to just cut them um, with the paper trimmer. Same thing with the pages. I could set up all the pages in there with the score marks and everything, but it's quite honestly faster to just do it manually. So our spine is going to be two and a quarter inches wide eight and seven inch inches high okay so that's going there the spine for this side that's going to attach to the little round piece is two and a quarter inches wide wide <clears throat> by three and three quarters inches high okay we're going to set those two pieces off to the side for now we're going to work on that part in a minute um to attach those two however you do need two pieces three and three quarters high by six inches wide Okay, so now to attach these, this all together, we need two pieces, eight and seven eighths high by six inches wide. And all we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and prep my chipboard piece here. Let me get some score tape on here. I cannot find my. Huh, okay. Okay. We're actually going to do score tape on both sides of this. there I'm going to take my 5 8 inch score tape and run that along the other edge okay so make sure I have my quarter inch on hand what we're gonna do is where my huh. 
burnish that score tape down. And pull the backing off. Actually, I think I'm going to. gonna erase my measurement off of there. I think I am gonna go ahead and erase that off there. You won't be able to see it through the cardstock, but we're gonna go ahead and erase it anyway. Okay. So all we're gonna do is just kind of eyeball the center. Get this centered up on here. And you will run this right down to the edge. Okay. Now we're going to put quarter inch score tape on both sides of this, just like we always do to. Make sure we have that space we need for our um, for our book to be able to bend without cracking the cardstock. a good visual. Okay, so now I'm actually going to do some more of my bigger score tape, and this is inch and a half score tape. about the only supply I'm using that didn't come from Country Craft Creations. So, just so you know. <laughs> All of my cardstock for this, the, the white artisan cardstock is from, I'm sorry, not white, cream artisan cardstock is from Country Craft Creations. Um, the chipboard is out of my stash just because I have a ton of it. Um, but that is also sold at Country Craft Creations. And it is the same good heavyweight chipboard that I use now. Okay. So now I'm gonna burn those down. And then we're going to pull our backing off of one side. We're going to line this up flush, the bottom flush with the bottom of the cardstock. We're going to put it up against that quarter inch score tape. And push that down. And then do the same thing on the other side. this over, burnish this down, and then we're going to put this piece on top. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I've already got adhesive there, I'm just going to do the same thing we did with this other piece, and I'm just going to run this wide score tape down the outside edge. Now, an alternative, an alternative to the way I'm doing this piece of it right here is I could have taken 
the big sheets of score tape, the, the eight and a half by 11 and covered one side of this with it. Um, as opposed to putting the adhesive on that piece of chipboard, but I didn't want to use one of those sheets this time. Okay. Same thing. We're just going to burnish down that score tape. And then pull off our backing on here. Bring this back in. I'm going to pull up the backing on that quarter inch that's in the middle. Maybe. Or not. <laughs> and that's because I'm starting in the middle of it. That would probably help to not start in the middle of the piece of the backing, huh? And then same thing here. I'm going to take this, I'm going to line this edge up with the bottom here, just center it up again. It doesn't have to be exactly centered because of course we have more cardstock we're going to put on either side here. Okay, burnish that down and then we are going to fold just like you do with a normal book. Use the bone holder to work that down in there. Same thing on this other side. And there we have our cover mostly put together. <laughs> okay, now we can go ahead and adhere down our pieces on the front and the back of the front cover and on the back of the back cover. However, on this side, and, and keep in mind, this little piece that's gonna come over the top here and get closed down with a magnet, this piece is optional, okay? You don't have to do this little piece that goes on the front here, okay? It's entirely optional, it's entirely up to you if you wanna do that. All right, so we've got this piece finished. This next piece is completely optional. This is gonna be our little flap that's gonna have our baseball on it that's going to come around the book and attach on here um, with a magnet to kind of hold the book closed, okay? So what we're gonna do I've got a piece of chipboard that is two and a quarter inches wide by three and three quarters inches high. What we're going to do is we're going to stick this piece down. I have two covers, just like we did with here, that are six inches wide by three and three quarters high. Okay. We're going to do the same thing we did here, here, that we're going to put this piece down on our cardstock. We're going to line it up with that baseball. Put this down here. We're going to slide this under here. We're going to figure out about where, about how high up we need this to go. So what I have done here is I've taken this circle and I've taken my chipboard, my spine piece. I am laying my spine piece on the baseball till those corners are even with this outside edge here, okay? I then marked a line where, that, where those outside corners of this piece touch the outside edges of the baseball, okay? draw a line there. I'm going to use that and lay that baseball on to the base of my book. 
I'm going to line up the bottom edge of that the circle with the edge of the book and I'm going to see where that line intersects. Okay, I'm going to make marks and then I'm going to just make a pencil mark so that I have a visual reference with where this is going to attach here. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a weird attachment. I don't think I have any Tyvek on hand because normally something like this where it's kind of a weird pivot point um, for the cardstock, I normally would maybe line this piece with Tyvek. I don't have any on hand, so we're not going to do that. But if you've got some, by all means, use it. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to cover the back side of this piece with score tape. We're going to just center this up on that. And I think my piece of chipboard's just ever so slightly too long. Okay. All right. So. We've got that. We're now going to run the score tape again on each end. Sorry, I am completely like score tape challenged today. that down. I'm not quite squared up like I would have liked to have been. I'm going to run our square, quarter inch on the side of this again just like we did before because that's going to give us our gap that we need. I'm going to turn this sideways and I'm going to take Oops, leave that score tape. Take this one off. And I'm just going to line this up between these two lines, which actually we're going to go. I don't know. That won't work either. And this is going to be a little bit weird because you're going to have to kind of eyeball this. Try to get it as straight as you can and push that down. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Our little round piece, we're just going to take that and actually with this we can no we can't, that won't work. <laughs> my ruler against the bottom of this here to get this lined up so that it's not gonna when it's on the bottom here it's not gonna hang over that edge and push that down okay I know it's a little odd but it will work and this is where I'm saying if I had any Tyvek which I looked I seem to be out of it at the moment it's fine, we'll make it work anyway. 
um, I would run Tyvek through on both sides of this here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and erase my measurement off of here. And then I'm going to run score tape over this entire piece. push this down over the top and then we're going to work our hinge points same way we did before okay this time it's a little bit easier because we are just lining this up between those two lines getting it lined up with the bottom of that and pushing that down okay I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna bend just like I did before work that down in there only this time you're also working it out and around that circle okay so we're getting both of those pieces of cardstock adhered down and then you're going to do the same thing on this side and you're going to kind of follow the curve of that chipboard okay and there is our album okay so now we can go ahead and take these pieces put these down on the inside and I'm going to do that with glue because that will give me um, a minute or so that I can kind of slide these around, make sure that they're lined up right. Um, one thing you will notice is this does have a raw edge on the chipboard once we get this all covered. You can leave it that way. Before you put these pieces down, you can ink this or you can do what I typically will do and cover the raw edges with um, Baker's Twine. So this was another shaped base I did where I had a curve that I was putting the spine in. I did this one a little bit differently because it was the spine that goes, that the page is actually attached to. So it did need to be completely seated down in between those shapes. So this one I did do a little bit differently. Um, I do have a cut file. Actually, I think it's in three parts in design space for this entire album, including all pages, inserts, matting, everything um, as well as a complete instruction video on how to make this one since it is summertime again and you know it's a camping one and you know it'd be a good one to do this time of year um, that one is out there so um, on my YouTube if you're interested it has the design space files linked to it so um, you know you can check that one out as well um, but yeah what I'll end up doing is running because you'll see and this is just a product of the way chipboard cuts in on the Cricut so this is lined up exactly but we've got a little bit of an overhang here okay I'm gonna leave this for now 
I could come in with a craft knife and actually trim this off. I might actually end up doing that. Or you can leave it because if you are going to run um, baker's twine in there, it actually kind of helps because you've got that, like, you end up with, like, a little channel to run it down into. Um, so I probably will end up leaving that just because um, I'll be able to a little bit more easily put my chipboard in there. I'm sorry, not my chipboard, my um, baker's twine in there while I go to cover that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get our next inside cover piece down. And if you do this, you're probably going to be going, well, okay, we're cutting these cover pieces and the chipboard from the exact same cut file, the exact same measurements and everything. Why is it different? It's because when the either the deep cut blade, if you're using the Cricut um, Explore Air 2, or the knife blade, if you're using the Cricut Maker, as it cuts several times around the chipboard pieces. And in doing so, it ends up just slightly affecting that... Um, the overall size of the um, it ends up affecting the overall size of the 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 chipboard part of your shape. So anytime you're cutting something with chipboard and then covering it with cardstock that's the same size and shape, you are going to have that slight difference. It's fine. You just need to know how to work around it. Okay, I am actually going to go ahead and trim this. However, I can't seem to find my mat. I literally was here the other day and I don't know what I've done with it. Hmm. Let me find that and I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about that. I have trimmed that little bit that was sticking out on the edges here. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to get our magnets in here for this closure. I am using two large basic gray magnets. Um, you'll see that I've got opposite poles as far as what's going to sit up. That way this can't get pulled or twisted so that it's connecting to the wrong ones. Um, so I'm going to get the backing off of there. And then we're going to fold this like it's actually going to sit once we've got pages and everything in here and everything decorated. And then just push those down. Okay. Um, I went ahead and put my baseball down on the front. Now I can do my other one on the inside. If you didn't want to do the second baseball on the baseball on the inside, you could just do a circle of, you know, whichever pattern paper you wanted to. We'll of course mat this with with something from the pattern, probably from the six by six pad. Um, and then we can go ahead and get these pieces down on the um, front and back of the book. I'm actually going to set this aside for a minute and we're going to talk about the spine. So our spine for this, I'm sorry, not the spine, our hinge <laughs> for this is going to be seven and three sixteenths high by six and a half wide. You're going to score, we're going to have half inch hinges and three eighth inch gussets. So you're going to score this at half an inch, one inch, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, two and three eighths, two and three fourths, three and one fourth, three and three fourths, four and one eighth, five and one, I'm sorry, four and one eighth, four and five eighths, five and one eighth, five and a half, 
and then six. Okay. I've gone ahead and put adhesive on the back here so I can go ahead and get my hinges. And I'm actually, before I even get into that, I am going to go on here and erase all of my marks that I put on here for myself. All right, as I was saying, we're going to go ahead and start folding that. Fold our next one. Get that burnished down. You, of course can use glue. I find it easier when building the hinges to just go ahead and use score tape. That's just a personal preference. Um, I've done it with glue a few times and I don't love it so I tend to not do that if I can help it. And then one more to go here. You'll notice that when you get your hands constructed, I'm going to kind of lay this over this way and burnish it down this way because we're going to, we're kind of training our hinges which direction they need to go. And then again, the other direction. You'll notice this does not have any kind of wings. We just have a hinge all by itself. We're going to put adhesive on the back of this. Um, and I'm actually going to do, how wide is this? Oops. I am actually going to do this with my wide score tape roll. Hopefully. <laughs> I can do this without making too big of a mess. Actually, I'm not going to do that because that's just a mess waiting to happen. I am going to use my 3 8 score tape in the middle. Ends. I'm going to make sure oops, there, that it's not hanging over the edges. The edges on the ends we can trim up here in just a second, so if it's hanging over those slightly, that's fine. We'll fix it. Burnish that 
down. Okay, get our hinges up, bring our book back in. What I have done is centered this on here, marked where that where it is when it's centered on here and then mark that on the spine because the spine is so much bigger than the actual hinge system itself we want to make sure it's centered because if it's not then our pages are going to come up either too high and poke out the top if they're a little bit on the low side that's fine in fact do they need to be on the low side I think I had this figured out. Okay, so we're just going to pretend that this is in here. Oops. Yes, it's fine centered up. Um, if you were worried about that, you could move it down a little bit so that you're not you don't run the risk of the pages coming up out the top. Because you'll see with this hinge centered, they are kind of close to this top corner. It's fine. I've, I designed this so that you should have enough space, but if you're worried about it, just move your hinge down and then you don't have to worry about them coming up too high. Okay, I'm going to go with it where I've got it marked. erase the center part of that one. And then you're just going to center it on the hinge itself. And push it down. And I am just going to use my bone folder to go in each one of those gussets and get this burnished down. Okay, I can erase the rest of my pencil mark. And now we're going to reinforce this. So what I have are four strips that are seven and 13 sixteenths high by a quarter of an inch wide. What we're going to do is we're going to glue these down through the middle of each one of these hinges. This is going to help reinforce our, our, our hinge down onto the spine because we of course don't have the wings, which I didn't want the wings. So that's why they're not there. Um, and then after we get all of these down, and if you don't want to do this with the solid cardstock, you can always wait and do this with um, pattern paper, and that's fine. Once we get all of those down, I have another piece that's going to just go over those ends to reinforce it a little bit more. Okay. And when we go through and mat, we will mat those two pieces with something. Okay, so it's up to you if you want to wait and use pattern paper in between here, you can, because then you could also do it on this outside edge where we don't actually have any of the, um, the hinge piece of it touching. It's up to you how you want to do this. I'm going to go ahead and do it with the solid cardstock with glue. And using the glue, this is going to accomplish... 
couple of things. The hinge itself is held down with score tape. Score tape can, depending on the environment you live in, dry out and eventually your books come apart. I have not had this happen with anything that I have made living in Utah or in Colorado. I did have that happen when we lived in Georgia. I had a horrible time getting anything other than glue to stay stuck for more than a couple of weeks when we lived in Georgia just because of the high humidity there. Um, Utah and where we used to live in Colorado are very, very dry, so it was never an issue there. Um, it was a little bit of an issue when we were in Virginia because, once again, higher humidity there, but um, not nearly as bad as, as the issue I had in Georgia. So that being said, you know, you know what it's like with where you live. You know what kind of adhesive works best for you. Um, so if you need to change that up, of course, do what works best for you or what you're most comfortable with or what have you. Everything looks good that I don't need to trim or adjust these. This top one is fine. So again, I'm going to glue this down. This is actually just going to help to reinforce this even a little bit more. So this piece is about 13 sixteenths high and two and a quarter wide. You, of course, will want to adjust that depending on where your spine actually ended up on, I'm sorry, where your hinge ended up on your spine. And what you think looks best to you. Okay, so that much is done. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the outside. Put my baseball on the inside, although I'm kind of thinking I might actually cut um, patterned to go right here. I haven't decided yet, so I might just leave this off for now. Um, we've got our magnets down. We've got our hinge in. Um, the base piece of this is essentially complete. Um, we can now work on decorating our pages, and then we can finish assembling our book. Okay, so I have matted the base of the book. So we've got the baseball that we cut with the Cricut. I cut the mats for the front and back inside cover and then the front and back of the book. Um, of course, cut the matting for the spines um, with the paper trimmer. Um, and then ended up not using my other baseball. I ended up using one of the six by six papers and cutting that um, to mat that there. So this bunch of it is pretty much ready to go um, so we can start working on our pages. Um, other than I don't think we cut anything for the inside of these covers. All I'm gonna do is put pockets on here. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so we can move this to the side for now and we can start talking about matting the pockets so I could give you matting measurements however I know everybody's paper trimmers are a little bit different I know you know some people are very very precise when they measure and cut their pieces and parts some are not um, and then two, you may want a different width of border around all of your little pieces here. 
Um, I have cut all of these so that I will have a sixteenth of an inch border around all of the pieces. Um, you might want more. Basically, to mat, what you're going to do is you're going to measure and say, okay, so this top flap is seven and a half. If you want a sixteenth of an inch border, you're going to take off one eighth. So you would cut your piece to mat this top flap at seven and three eighths by, let's see here, that is not quite four and a quarter. So I would go four and one eighth. Actually, I would go probably four and one sixteenth on that, honestly. Um, if you wanted an eighth of an inch border, you would take off a quarter of an inch. So you would go seven and one quarter to mat across a seven and a half inch span. Um, if you wanted even thicker borders, which I don't see very often, but if you did, um, you would then go, say you wanted, I don't know, quarter inch border. Um, anyway, you just, you move it in, in those increments. So if you wanted, like I said, a sixteenth of an inch border, you're going to go deduct an eighth of an inch. You want a quarter of an inch, or an eighth of an inch border, you're going to deduct a quarter of an inch. If you wanted a quarter of an inch border, you're going to deduct, you know, half an inch. Um, all of mine are going to be a sixteenth of an inch border, so I've taken an eighth of an inch off of the measurement for each one of these pieces. But like I said, it's best if you measure your own completed pages. And, and figure out your matting that way rather than um, rely on my measurements and have something either be too long or too short or what have you. Did I not cut a piece to go over there? I must not have. Oh, I had another piece. Maybe not. Okay. Anyway, so on some of these I have done piecing so like on this page um, with this pocket I've got this piece that's going to mat above the pocket and then I'm piecing the rest of this I could have sworn I had another piece cut for that but apparently I didn't cut it um, and then I'm going to mat it like that and then I didn't cut that one down either it must have been just as I was trying to wrap up to go pick up my son um so i need to trim that down but you know that's basically how i'm going to mat this this one's going to be solid on the top here i'm going to mat this like that the one that i do need to show you however is on the back side of page one so you'll remember i had you not put down this pocket because we were going to kind of fuss with this a little bit and mat this so that the pockets sitting in the middle of that. So all I have done is I have cut my my pattern paper to cover the entire space underneath our flap here. What I did is I just kind of lined this up, went okay, put the flap down. This is about where I want my pocket. So a quarter of an inch over. I marked a quarter of an inch in and then trimmed a hole the same size as my finished pocket. Okay? So that's that piece right there. So what I will do here is glue this down. And then I'll go ahead and get my tape off the back of this. And 
I had two complete paper collections for this and I really ended up not using both of them in their entirety. I know one is completely gone and then I've got maybe four sheets out of the, out of the second one that I've used. Okay, so we're just going to line this up over our hole and then we've got this piece. So what I'm going to do with this piece is cut this down by an eighth of an inch. so that we get a nice little border on that pocket, but you still got that piece that came, you know, so it looks like, you can tell it all came out of one piece. So what we can do here, we can leave it like that so that you get that, that look. You could turn it over if you want to, but I want that look with that whole background with all those tickets, because I kind of like that, I think it's neat. Okay, then I would just go ahead and keep matting. Did I not cut all those mats either? I didn't. Okay, so I've still got more stuff to cut for this page, which I'm not surprised. Okay, page two, we have our little home plate flap. Okay, what we've done here, or what we're going to do here, lost my pencil. There it is. Okay. So what we're going to do with this is the exact same thing we did when we did this page. The only difference is this is that eighth of an inch smaller. Okay. So all we're going to do is the exact same thing we did before. We're going to go down. We're going to find our center point. This one's actually going on the back side here, so I want my center point to actually be at the bottom. Okay, and since this is five and seven eighths, so that we have our border, and then we're going to go around, we're going to go three inches and mark it. And three inches on the other side and mark it and we're going to do just like we did before that I'm putting my pencil on that mark pivoting my ruler so it goes up to that top mark and then the same thing again and then I'm going to take my big scissors because this one the points at the top, we're going to do it at the top. We're going to mark that. And we're going to go three and three again. hard to see on it 
down. done there. All we're doing inside is I've got another one of these six by six pages. Um, I've got some of the border strips that I'm going to run around that and kind of piece that because I like how that looks. And then just full mats, full page mats in here. Um, I might go back through and add some solid um, photo mats or journaling spots. I don't know. We'll figure that out when we go to decorate. Um, the back side of that, of course, is that pocket. So I've got everything cut for that to mat that page. That one's fairly basic, so we're not going to go through anything on that one. Um, the belly band, I've got that all cut to mat. Um, the insert, I've got it cut. I'm piecing on the outside, and then I've just got um, solid cardstock on the middle. And then the back side of that is that um, waterfall where we're using the 3x4 cut aparts. So I've got those all cut, ready to go. Apparently I still need a mat for that one. I may not have as much paper left as I thought I was going to. <laughs> and that's okay. Alright, so let's talk about this page. So this is our flap where we're putting our baseballs. Assuming I can get them turned right. Okay, so we need to mat the outsides of those flaps before, before we put down the baseballs. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. And if you've seen my tutorial on my 6x6 mini, um, that uses just the six by six paper pad to do all of the matting where I did the little half, the quarter circle closures. Um, on those, I actually did them where I scored them and, and folded so that they were a true pocket. Because of the way I was putting this one on here, I didn't go that route. So that's why we actually do have to mat this before we put those down. Okay, so then all I'm going to do here, I want these right up to the edge of that flap on the side and on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull off the backing on our tape. centered up and down it goes. Okay. And then do the same thing on the other side. And then what's going in here to hold this together is this piece that's actually from this sheet. Um, they're kind of cut apart. They're kind of not. Um, I tried to use them in places where I could cut them apart and use them. Um, so they're kind of scattered here and there throughout the book, which is why some of these other things are pieced is because I wanted to use different pieces of this. Um, so that's what this one is because this will fit in here perfectly. We will actually mat this on some solid cardstock here in a minute um, just to give it a little bit more strength. And then I might actually put something else on the back side of that mat. But that's going to sit in there and hold that closed. The inside, we're just matting like always. I'm actually using the other half of our baseball in here. I'm just going to attach it down on this side so it will be kind of like a big tuck spot. But I want the rest of that cute little 
baseball to go to waste. Um, and then I've also in here, I've got two little quarter inch strips that I'm going to mat on either side of that pocket because that pocket isn't the same width as the page. So I'm actually going to mat that one so that it's kind of a, not quite a continuation of, of this page over here, but you know, close enough. Um, so that's how we're going to do that one. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I cannot pick these things up today. So I'm going to put all of this back in here. Okay. Um, the back side of that is I'm doing some more piecing on this one. Um, this one is, is there a magnet? yes, this one's held closed, closed with a magnet, so there's nothing else we need to do on that one. That one's held closed with the tuck spot or the the mat that we're gonna tuck in there. Um, somewhere I thought I had one. No, we're not to that one yet. Okay. So we've got one more, I guess, is all. I thought we had two. Okay, so this one, we've got our pocket that has the very large flap. I swear I'm missing something. So there were two places I thought that we needed to do like a tie closure. Ah, this is the other place. Okay, so we will have to come back to this one. We'll come back to that one in a minute. Um, so on this one, this page has a very large flap over the pocket. I've got everything cut just to, you know, mat this like normal. Um... and then do some piecing on the back side there. Um, so we'll do that. This one should be heavy enough. We don't need to do any kind of closure just because it is a bigger flap. Um, it should lay pretty flat without too much problem. This one is our side loading pocket with kind of our long sideways waterfall on the front. Um, this one think is okay the way it is. I don't think we needed to do, we may end up doing a tie closure on this. So let's, let me think about that for a second because I've got brads somewhere. Okay. So I do have the brads that go with this. And the cool thing about Cartabella and Echo Park with their brads, they always do just some little bonus chipboard pieces on here, which I like that. That's kind of nice. So really what we're going to do is we're going to start with matting the backs of a couple of these. Um, so we can mat like the back side of these first do. Weird. Okay, that's how it goes. All right, so we're gonna mat the back side of these first three, the, the bottom three flaps, because nothing needs to attach to those other than the paper itself. we can actually also go through and mat the front three pages. So I think, which one was I doing on the front? I 
I'm doing the orange one on the front, so we'll set that one aside too. So what we can do is go ahead and put these down. anything for the tops of these well the top or bottom because we're gonna alternate which way these go um, okay. and that's fine um, I can always come back and mat those with um, some more of the solid cardstock if I want to Okay, so now we need to decide if we're going to do some sort of um, tie closure on this. And it does look like we're going to need to because those are not going to lay flat. It doesn't look like. Um, so we can either do a tie closure and use um, brads and like, because what we'll do is... You know, we'll mat this, of course, in its entirety. So just pretend here. Um, we'll run a brad through here, and then we'll mat the back side. Okay. Actually, that's what goes on the back side of this one. Um, and then we'll just uh, hook it over on this side. So that you'll run it, you know, around that way. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and do that. So let me very quickly grab some twine. some twine. Let's figure out which one we want to use on this. I'm thinking, I don't know. Honestly, that greenish kind of looks good. So let me think here for a second how we're going to do this. All right, so let me, before we get too much further, let me find my ruler 
figure out what we need to mat the top half of that. So that is about I need that to be three by three. So let me grab my paper trimmer. Let's see what I've got as far as some scraps over here. that's going on the front here. Those can go on the inside. I think I'm actually going to mat that green. Let's figure out which brad we're putting on this side. I think we're going to do this little reddish orange one that says play ball. Let me find my little pokey thing. Center this up about right there, and put that for now. Oh, that really went through, didn't it? What he's doing up there? It sounds like a herd of elephants. close that one down. We're not going to do it too tightly because we want to be able to get our string around it. Okay. And then we'll figure out which one we're going to put on this side. And since this is a pocket, it's not really going to matter that we've already matted this before we put this down. In fact, what we could do Maybe if I can get it 
out. <laughs> okay. So on this side, let's figure out where it needs to be. I'm going to say about right there. Do tie closures. <laughs> okay. Get that spread out back in there. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna run it around here, and I'm gonna tie a little tiny knot. I'm just going to sit here and fight with it because, you know, it's late and I'm trying to get this done before we go on our camping trip tomorrow and somehow I don't think it's going to happen because I still have to pack the trailer tomorrow morning and go to the grocery store for said trip. I have done none of these things so far today. Okay, cut that off. Alright, so now we've got our little string closure. I'm going to leave that about right there. Okay, so that will work to hold that down. We can go ahead and mat the back side of this. And cover up the back of that brad. And we can do our other mats. So this one, I think I'm actually going to do a blue one on the opposite side here. Okay, on that one, I think I'm going to do another blue one. I'll just go ahead and do the back side really quick because this will only take a minute. page is 100% done. Um, 
like I said, you all know how to mat stuff. Um, I need to decide on, no, not that one. This one over here. If we need a tie closure on this one, I think we are gonna need one on this one as well. Um, so, and this one is gonna be a little bit different. So I'm gonna go ahead and mat the inside of this. And I don't normally do tie closures because I don't normally, I try not to buy the brads, honestly, because I just don't use them. But with this one, they were so cute. And I initially, I actually hadn't bought them. <laughs> and um, realized this when I started working on this on Saturday and just kind of panicked and was like, oh shoot, I didn't buy that and I didn't buy the 6x6 pad, which I almost always buy the 6x6 pads for these things and that was literally the reason I did that entire um, album with just the 6x6 pad because, you know, I, I do that all the time. I buy these 6x6 pads then I don't know what to do with them and then they end up sitting here. So I was trying to not continue to do that. <laughs> um, okay, so what am I doing? What have I got here? This one's going on the inside. Okay, those both go on the inside. Okay, so we can go ahead and mat the outside of these because we're going to do the same thing with the brad. We're going to poke it through open it up on the back side and then we'll mat over the top of it. So, I mat that one. And those all go with that on the inside. To a baseball game yet and it's already July. I can't even believe that. Normally we go, normally we've been by now already and for whatever reason this year it just, this is like the second summer in a row that things have just been just weird with everything going on and we haven't been to a game yet and that makes me sad because I love going. Okay so on this one I'm going to use baseball brad and then I'm going to use one that actually says baseball so I'm going to do this like we did before and open this up set it down on there and kind of figure out about where to go. And we're going to put the baseball one up here on top. over figure out about where we want the next one I think I'm going to put it about here in the middle okay. get that kind of marked where I want it I'm trying to figure 
figure out where I marked it. <laughs> of course. And that one's going to be this one. It says baseball. How do you think I put those on upside down? Okay, they're balls, it's fine. <laughs> okay, this one I want to leave it just a tiny bit looser. Because we're going to wrap the string around it. Let's see, for this one, let's go with the red, I think. So, several years ago, when Baker's Twine first kind of got to be a really popular thing, I bought, I got some deal at Christmas or, you know, Black Friday or something from, um, I believe it was the Twinery. And I bought, oh my gosh, how many rolls do I have over there? 12, 16 rolls, full rolls of Baker's Twine. I will have Baker's Twine forever. I have so much of it, it's ridiculous. And honestly, I don't use it nearly as much as I should because I love it, it's so cute. go. Alright, so that works. Open this up. Figure out which one's going where. It's up there. That one mounted down. one down. This one trimmed. I'm actually just going to eyeball it with the scissors. one was kind of an interesting collection in that it just had the three by four cut aparts that all look like baseball cards and it didn't have any other cut aparts which was kind of different not what I'm used to seeing but that's okay I think we'll do that so this is one and a quarter by four So that was the only other kind of different matting that we had as far as the pages in this go. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of my mats down and when I come back we'll get our pages in the book and then all we have left to do is decorate. Okay, we're entering the home stretch here, <laughs> baseball joke, anyway, <laughs> um, I've gone through Got my pages in the order that I want them, gotten them all oriented so that the opening that goes towards the spine is all on one side. What I'm going to do, this is going to be my front page, I'm going to turn my stack upside down because we're actually going to start with the back page. So if you open that up, you'll notice you've got your flap down here at the bottom. That flap this is the one that's like on the wrong side. 
is going to slide right up on that hinge so that the bottom of that hinge goes flush with the bottom of that of that that piece okay all right what we're gonna do maybe I'm actually gonna open that up and I am gonna put if it wants to come out there it goes I am gonna put glue instead of tape all on actually I meant to do it on the other side but that's okay all on one side okay we're gonna line this up I slide that bottom piece flush up against that hold our page shut and then we're gonna lay it down and when it's laying down however much it pulls out that's going to be our gap so where we've got this page laying mostly flat and we're gluing it that way when this is all put together this page is still going to lay flat ish because there's like a fairly big boxy pocket on the back of that so it's not going to be totally flat but it's going to go as flat as it can go okay and give that just a minute to um set I've apparently lost my bone folder somewhere here in my complete disaster that's okay it will turn up eventually just be nice to have right now but that's okay okay then we're gonna come back over here I'm gonna open this up and I think the rest of these are all oriented the other direction my little there it is We're going to pull our adhesive backing off of there, off that bottom piece. And then we're going to run our glue on the other side. Hold all that shut. Press it down, press it down. And again, that's going to lay about as flat as it's going to lay. The only way you're going to get pages to lay perfectly flat is to not have a whole lot of dimension and to do a hinge that's not necessarily attached down at the back. I'm not going to do it that way, so this is what you get. <laughs> okay, so let's go to our next page. Apparently it's also oriented that way, which is fine. Okay. Get our glue on here. Same thing again. We're going to push that up, pinch it down, and then just lay the page over. And that's going to pull up and however much it needs to pull up. And since it is glue, we can have a little bit of wiggle room to kind of Make sure everything's straight, make sure everything's lined up. And we're just going to kind of hold this down until that glue gets good and tacky. And we're going to go back and do the exact same thing we did before. Crying out loud. There we go. And we're going to run our glue again. Here, looks like I need just a tiny bit more in there. It's fine. And then we're going to close it up again. Because we're using glue, once this is all put together and set, we can actually kind of go back through with this nice little tiny tip and get it up in here and add some more if we need to. Like right there. Okay. Same thing again. 
then only this one's going the way I was hoping all of them were gonna go but obviously I wasn't paying attention which is fine <laughs> it happens and of course you don't want to get too crazy with the glue here you don't want it to be too much and too heavy because then it just takes that much longer to dry um, run the risk of that much more of it seeping out on the edges which of course can be very messy and you don't want to do that because you end up gluing down stuff you did not intend to glue down also going the way I wanted it to. <laughs> is the one drawback to using glue is you do spend some time just kind of holding it but I can guarantee you these pages are not coming off they are not going anywhere Okay, because thankfully we're using this little tiny tip. Okay, so at this point we need to, I think all we're going to do on this inside front cover know that I'm doing anything on this back cover. I might just put a very flat pocket on this back inside cover. Um, 
got a little bit more space to play with on the front so or I could just keep it very simple and do the same thing on both the back and the front. Um, I'll get that figured out here in a second and uh, which really we could leave them just the way they are and maybe just put some photo mats on here which is I think what I'm actually gonna do. So there is our book of course exclusive of any kind of decorating and embellishing which I don't usually do on camera because everybody has their own style of doing it. There's our book from above. Um, I will do all my decorating and embellishing and come back with a final walkthrough. Okay, so we have our finished book. I have gone around the edges of the entire book with some um, chunky doodle bug twine out of my stash. So this is the doodle bug twine. This is, hold on. That is a normal piece of Baker's twine. So you can see there's quite a bit of a difference there. Um, I do have several spools of this on hand because it's really good for hiding raw edges on chipboard. So, um, I went ahead and did that. I have decorated the front. Um, I used what I did here is these are some of the baseball card cut aparts that are part of the collection. All I did is just basically crunch them up, distress the, distress the edges, and then like crunch them, and then glue those down. This, of course, closes with a magnet. And inside we've got our pockets. Um, I used one of the chipboard, the chipboard. Um, banner. I did actually back those with a little bit of cardstock just so that they kind of popped a little bit more and then they are on pop dots. Um, there's our flap with our quarter circles. Uh, just some more um, cut aparts in there. Scraps that are matted. Uh, there's that layout page. Let that loose. So I've got a couple of tags tucked in there. This just opens up and then there's a pocket in here. Just got more photo mats in there. And so I should have put a magnet in this one. I will say that. I should have put a magnet in here somewhere, but I didn't. So there you go. It's okay. Another little tag right there. This just opens up and we have a big pocket in here. This one is just this long waterfall. And then another pocket on the inside. This is our booklet that we pieced. So it looks cute from either side. And then when you open it up, we've got just a couple of the stickers in there to kind of add some interest to the inside of that. Here is our waterfall. Side load pocket here, just some of the cut apart sheets and some other scraps and things. There's our home plate page that opens into a good photo spot. And then of course we've got our little pocket here and I've just got more cut aparts in there. On the back page, because this is fairly dimensional with this pocket on here. I just did some little flaps, um, another small banner, uh, popped up that little sticker, popped that sticker up, actually backed that one on cardstock. I actually backed quite a few of these on cardstock. Um, I left this blank just because we do have the magnet underneath there and we want it to be able to close up on the front. Um, just one little chipboard element on the side there and there you have it not too bad. Um, so if you do end up doing this tutorial, please, oh, there's another little chipboard element there. <laughs> if you do end up following this tutorial and making your own book, by all means, please share it with me. I would love to see it. Um, Scrapping Under the Influence on Facebook and um, also on Instagram. And thanks for checking it out. Bye.